Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Welcome to my Sunday Orchid chat and cheers. We're celebrating. Let's do that first then. What are we celebrating? Two things. First of all, for the first time in a while, I got up this morning and stood up and thought I didn't say ow. We're on the mend, seriously on the mend. So that was celebration number one. But we don't we don't do this sort of thing at the time I got up, which is still silly o'clock. I wish that was something I could change. It's between four and five. Um, and that just seems to be it. Um, if I wake up earlier than that, I often manage to get back to sleep again. But if I wake up any time in that sort of vein, um, I just cannot get back to sleep. So I get up. Um, it's probably got something to do with my um, <laughs> becoming bored very easily in the evenings and um, as a consequence I go to bed relatively early and also if I don't get up around that time Mojo's going to start yowling anyway because he wants his breakfast because he's got used to that time for his breakfast so uh, and um, a couple of days ago I woke up and I thought, oh, it must be a full moon, it's really bright. And it was getting light, it was nearly half past five, and it was getting light. The days really are getting longer now. Second thing we're celebrating is that um, once I decided I was going to celebrate, I mean, it's, it's getting on in the day now, we're heading towards tea time. Or, uh, well, it depends what part of the world you're in. <laughs> But I have, I have a, a dinner time or a lunch time and then I have a tea time. Um, some people call that dinner. Anyway, the evening meal is looming. It's not that far away. So I'm filming quite late today for my Sunday chat. And Mojo was sitting in the sun. I thought, I'm going to pour a glass of wine and go and sit in the sun with Mojo. I lasted about two minutes. It's flipping cold out there. It might look nice with the sun out, but it's cold, very cold. I would say probably only about eight or nine degrees out there. Um, so very deceptive. I was expecting to go and sit in the warmth of the sun. But far from it, it's cold out there. Um, weather forecast said we have a couple of days of cold, then it's going to get milder again. But with the mild comes the rain. Just for a change. <laughs> Anyway, the good thing with the period we're in, which is the day length rate of change is at its maximum, spring equinox and all that. So for four or five days either side of that point, the rate of change is not far off four minutes a day. So the old um, day lengths clock up pretty quickly this time of year. And <clears throat> as I've said before, I've stopped using the lights. And as a consequence, I will be rearranging the grow room. I'm easing off on that. It's not essential yet. Um, but um, analysing the use of the lights is almost impossible. Um, because they were on at a period when some things were growing naturally anyway. And would have done whether the lights were there or not. The things I wanted to bring into growth early didn't. I will show you the net results of the lights being on for that length of time to bring resting dendrobiums into growth early. There it is. That's it. That's it, literally. That is the only resting dendrobium that's come into growth and quite honestly it's come into growth at the time of year it should be anyway so i'm not sure the lights were a success really not sure and given the expense i'm not sure we'll be doing it again um, in the other place we messed about with the lights on one occasion i believe and i i said then that i couldn't determine whether it had done any good or not and I don't think I've achieved much here um, as a consequence of the lights. Um, we shall see. Um, what I might do is um, 
once the um, grow room's rearranged and everything, I might pick a shelf um, that I can put the big light, the um, spider farmer light, um, the best one quite honestly, that I can put that above and then extend the growing season and try starting the season early again next year, 2025. And it will be on a select group of plants that can be analysed and determined whether the lights have done any good because I know them well enough. So we might do it as like an experiment. Can we really extend the growing season? Um, Anyway, that's to be, uh, not, that's not a now thing. For now, the lights are off. Um, what else? Rearranging the grow room. I will be filming some of that. I probably won't film all of it. But it's not a big deal to film it. I can just plonk the camera up high on the tripod up in the top corner somewhere and just leave it running. And then, you know, sort of cut bits out, speed bits up, do things like that. I can make something of that. Um, now one thing, I'm not apologising for this because this was not necessarily said in advance of what was going to happen next. Last Sunday I asked people to give, my, to give me a list of their five plants, five orchids that I've got, that they would like a spotlight done on. And also a category, which I read out, that they would like me to um, elaborate on as a category, so a generalised sort of view of the orchids that grow in that category and many people responded thanks a bunch for that thanks for your help and you've had nothing since well I didn't say when did I <laughs> I did say I might start this past week well I didn't um, I'm part way through keying the data in and until I've got all the data I can't do it so uh, I will hopefully get on with that during the coming week and our first video will be um, five orchids voted for and uh, that will be a video and probably one category so that will be two separate videos in, in the coming week. Um, we've got repotting, I've got that coming out here Rolls. Um, I have a lot. <laughs> we've done some um, but there's plenty more to do and if I'm going to keep up to speed with the repotting I'm going to have to start grouping plants together. Now, I group them together under normal circumstances by the media they're going to go in. That way I can mix up one lot of media for a group of plants. Um, under normal circumstances, that would mean they are probably the same plants, like a group of dendrobiums or a group of mastervalias. But not always, not always. And um, the last ones on the list are the ones that got the um, sphagnum moss added early last year when I first got it and I decided to go back to using sphagnum mixed with small bark and perlite as a regenerative type mix actually get the roots going and get some growth going uh, which has worked in a lot of cases I must admit not all but a lot um, and the last on the list of repotting is replacing the media on those plants because of the sphagnum moss. If I don't, then they'll go two full years. And that's probably okay, but I've just said probably. Well, why take the risk? Why not just repot them? The cost of the bale of the um, sphagnum moss <laughs> is the cost of two orchids. It's just, you know, penny pinching in the wrong places. Um, you know, changing the media, fresh media, keeping the roots happy, keeps the plant happy under most circumstances. So, uh, providing it's the right sort of media for that plant, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, right, so that's that. Um, what else will be going on out here? Not a lot really. It's, it is repotting time and that's what I need to crack on with. Um, I've got no new buds or spikes that I spotted last time I watered, but um, the last lot of watering <laughs> is normally all my pots, 
but it was the opposite this time. It was everything but all my pots. So it was the cooler, shadier stuff and the cymbidiums and the phalaenopsis in the kitchen, leaving all the general pots to do. Uh, they'll get done tomorrow. And I may find stuff, you know, that I, that I has appeared since last time it was done, which was eight, nine days ago. It'll be ten tomorrow. Um, yes, so uh, tomorrow's job is watering. I know it's my day off, but it's my day off YouTube. Yeah, not not day off, day off, to sit around doing nothing all day. I can't do that. Um, I know some people can, but I can't. <laughs> the only time I can sit around and do nothing is if I actually fall asleep in the chair. Um, and then I'm actually catching up on some sleep. So technically I'm not doing nothing. I'm just not active. Um, but as I do believe we are mobile again, and we are twisting and turning without any twinges or ouch ouch anything at all. I wouldn't risk touching me to toes even if I thought I could, which I don't think I can. Oh, used to be able to once. <laughs> um, so I'm still not going to push my luck. At the end of the day, I'd class that, you know, we're technically okay again, but we still need to go careful, you know, avoid lifting heavy stuff and all that sort of things. But I've got some, I really need to get some gardening stuff done. Bonsai, I've got pruning to do. I've got some planting to do out there. You know, I've got some new plants in pots waiting to be planted. So there is some work to do outside. And um, today might have been a good day to get on with it. Because when you're working, the cooler temperature doesn't matter, does it? Because you sort of keep warm because you keep uh, mobile. But an amount of that work does involve bending. And um, as I said, I don't want to push my luck too quickly. So uh, that's that. Um, this channel, um, I've been noting the number of subscribers. Um, there's a, a, a screen I can go on to. Um, dashboard basically in, in YouTube studio that gives me a snapshot of the basics for the whole channel and one of the things it shows is um, it's, a, it, it's a rolling period of 28 days and you get for your three main things which is your views, your subscribers and your money, well in my case not everybody's, um, it just shows a grey arrow that it's similar to the last, you know, last period analysed, or it shows a downward arrow if your figures have dropped in any of those three sections. And if you've increased a reasonable amount in any of those sections, you get a nice bright green upward arrow. And I'm getting those three green upward arrows virtually all the time. Um, now, the good thing about that is one of them is the money side of things. And this is not your good selves contributing anymore, although I have got a new member, thanks, thanks a bunch for actually joining as a new member, um, <laughs> it make a huge amount of difference because one dropped out as well, <laughs> so we sort of stayed the same, but I'm grateful for any of that sort of thing, but no, there's nothing to do with the memberships or anything, this is the actual YouTube generated revenue from the adverts and stuff, so it means adverts are getting watched, that's the important thing. Just watching the videos doesn't generate income, um, either for YouTube or for the creators, basically. <laughs> you need to watch the adverts, that's where the money changes hands. Um, so it, it, it's, it's increasing, things are getting better. And I've been making a note every two days of the number of subscribers. And I've gained a lot. Um, I've, I'm up to about two weeks worth of recording every two days. And there's quite a lot, you know. We only just got to 15,000 a while ago. Well, we're heading up towards 15,300 in a relatively short space of time. So the rate of increase is good. And for everybody that's joined recently as a new subscriber, whether you're a new subscriber because you've just found the channel, in which case, welcome. I hope you enjoy what you see and I hope you stick around. You probably won't like every video, but hopefully you like more than you don't, <laughs> if you see what I mean. 
I don't think any channel creates a video that somebody can like every single one. But we do our best, you know. As creators, that's our job. That's what we do. Um, but also a thank you to those that have been watching some considerable time and have finally given in and subscribed. In other words, you've succumbed to all my bullying that I keep doing every Sunday. Yeah. It literally, it costs nothing, it's, it's no big deal, but it is for the channel. So if you are watching, and you have been, and you're a long-term viewer, and you're still not subscribed, it would be nice if you did so. And that's the end of the bullying. <laughs> it's a gentle bully, it's more of a reminder than anything. And the other thing that um, lots of people just forget without a reminder, now, I don't harp on about it, but the thumbs up, clicking that like, that helps the channel, costs nothing. And in my book, the only reason for not doing that is you actually dislike the video, in which case, what are you doing still here? <laughs> so if you're still here, do it now. Go on, I'm watching. Thank you. <laughs> It's the only time on my videos you'll ever hear me going on about liking and subscribing. And the one I always forget. And share. Lots of other people remember that. I always forget. So, you know, if you, if you think a video might be useful, not necessarily this one, because this is like the chatty one, um, that has been maintained due to popular request, by the way. So even if this isn't your favourite type of video, an awful lot of people have said that this Sunday chat must stay when I did the changes on the channel. So it has stayed. I got bullied. <laughs> By popular request, I think we call that. Um, but yeah, it's um, good to do the like and do the subscribe. And if you've got, a, if you see one of my videos that you think might be useful to a friend or family or anything like that, please feel free to share the video, yeah? Right, that endeth that bit. Um, now, we did start doing a spotlight on the end of the Sunday chat. Just pick an orchid and do a spotlight on it, as spotlight videos as a concept don't work very well on my channel. It's all very well if it's a if it's an orchid that you've actually got, you'd be really interested. But there's quite a lot of stuff in here that I doubt if anybody's got, or hardly anyone. So the interest level wasn't high enough, but sticking it on the end of the Sunday chat was working quite well. And then those who aren't interested in that particular orchid, or even the concept of a spotlight, don't need to stay. You see what I mean? You know, because it's at the end. You just miss out the end. And you might miss out the joke on the end as well. Not that I've got one today. Um, <laughs> can I say that one on YouTube? Mm. Yes, it's words. I'm not sure they... The YouTube algorithm um, checks your written words, so your titles, um, anything you put in the description, it checks that quite thoroughly. And it interprets speech um, as well and looks for iffy words within the words you've said in the video. So it, it does look out for um, words that are inappropriate, shall we say, or it thinks are inappropriate. Unfortunately, algorithms can take a word out of context and deem it an iffy word or a naughty word or a bad word when it's actually not. I mean, if you take my video in the week, Insa was really surprised I got away with the title because it was... Um, something like, OK Bugs, Time to Die. It had the word die in the title. Now, in context, there was nothing wrong with that. We were talking about buds, yeah? But just think of that title in the context of an algorithm, Time to Die. It could be taken in all sorts of strange ways. Um, yes, so uh, yeah, you've got to watch your words and every stuff like that, all that sort of stuff. Last thing you want is black mark. Um, I haven't had one for a very, very long time. Um, a lot of the reasons people get black marks is they have background music, so they have music playing while they're talking. Um, I am very careful when I do the sort of videos that have music associated with them. 
um, to make sure that that music came from the YouTube library. So it has to be viable. Um, yeah, I've been caught out before now, so uh, I, just, I just don't do it. So. Mm -hmm. We don't want black marks. Right, um, yes, so all those um, people who selected their orchids that they'd like a spotlight on and the categories they'd like me to go over, something like top three I'll pick, I'm not gonna, I might end up doing all of them over the course of the year, who knows. Um, but I will get on to those, they will get done, they're not forgotten. So um, even though it's a week ago since I asked you to do it, and um, there's still no results that you can see, there is work going on in the background. Um, that's good stuff. <clears throat> now next weekend is a, next weekend I believe is actually Easter, which for me means nothing. I haven't got any visitors coming round, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so it's just another weekend to me. And even though there's bank holidays, so people have got days off work and also, I haven't, all the days are just the same for me. So I won't be doing anything special for Easter. I won't, probably won't be going out. The problem is I can think of a couple of gardens I'd like to visit, you know, and have a look at the spring flowers, um, you know, camellias in bloom, all stuff like that. It's all very well, but because it's effectively a holiday for the whole country, they'll be heaving. It'll all be pushing and shoving and barging and kids screaming all over the place. It doesn't really appeal to me, that sort of thing. It's like when I went to Compton Acres. I think I bumped into three or four people the whole of the time I was there. That's what I like, you know. I always say when I go for a walk in the forest, if I can see somebody in my binoculars, they're too close. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I'm just going to take a break and then I'll be back and we'll move on to something else. Right, where was I? Um, input from your good selves. Um, in two weeks time, um, Saturday the 6th of April, Hannah and I will be off to, oh, and I got told off for saying Hannah and not saying who Hannah is. And you're right. What I've just said back in this video about an awful lot of new subscribers coming in, well, you're not going to know who the hell Hannah is, are you? It's my daughter. <laughs> so now you know, now you've been told. Um, yes, yeah, she visits every four or five weeks for a weekend. Sometimes we go off and do things, other times we just spend some time together. Um, she doesn't drive, so I have to drive to where she lives to get her and fetch her. And that's, uh, well, effectively, that's four hours. You know, it's, a, it's an hour and three quarters each way. And I usually spend a bit of time up at hers when I get there. So you're looking at a four hour turnaround twice in a weekend. So, um, yeah, um, she will be coming down for our trip to the Mathers Foundation um, Orchid Nurseries. Um, orchids we will be looking at is, are now varied. There was a time where if you went to see them, you would be looking at the Odontoglossum versions of the Oncidium type orchids and Cymbidiums, those were their specialities. Well, they've now taken on quite a few extra collections. So, you know, they've got quite a large variety of orchids now. Um, they've certainly taken on the, what was the national collection of Pleonies, or Pleonies, however you say it. A good few of those should be in bloom. Um, they're strange little orchids. Um, they're real cool growers, cool to cold in the main, and they're terrestrials that bloom before the leaves come out. So you've got a pot full of dirt with a lovely bloom coming out the top, and then the bloom fades and the leaves come. And then photosynthesis and all that, and some added food. Feeds, it's a bulb basically, or tuber technically whatever, <laughs> lives underground, and then it produces more underground. So they bulk up relatively quickly. Now, Mathers Foundation are selling some of those, but they are from the breeder, the guy whose national collection they took on. So they're unique, They're not found anywhere else. The crosses were done by that guy. They've been registered, and now there are bulbs for sale, starting at around 50 quid 
a bulb. Up to a lot more than that. <laughs> a lot more. Um, and that's the problem with Mathers. You don't go there expecting to come out with a couple of carrier bags full of orchids. The Odonto Blossoms that they've got, again, a lot of those are unique. They're registered and you're looking at plants starting around £100 if they're flowering. Yeah. And then they go up from there. <laughs> uh, so I may well not come home with anything, but the thing that can be bought relatively cheaply are the cymbidiums. So here's a job for you. Those that know the channel reasonably well know what cymbidiums I've got. If I can come across one, what do you think would add to the collection? Now, obviously, if I spot any miniatures, which I don't think I will, because I don't think they grow them, what they're trying to do with their hybridisation programme is get the giants down to medium, so that they all become a manageable size, and they become vigorous in as much as new bulbs will often produce two spikes. The spikes are self-supporting, with a good number of blooms, good colours, good size and everything. So, you know, they're sort of goal-like. I mean, obviously there are cascading types in Bidiums. They're not trying to get them to grow up, right? Those naturally cascade. And I haven't got any of those, so I always, as my blooms come out, with few exceptions, I tend to stake them upright. Because if they arch over, they, you know, they're a metre across. <laughs> they're already too big, take up too much space. But yeah, if I spotted, I mean, I haven't got a white one. Now, I wouldn't want a white one that has no colour on it at all, but a white one with, say, some pink in the lip might be quite nice, or some yellow in the lip, or with a few very delicate marks on it. Anyway, I will keep my eye out, but um, the last couple of visits uh, that I've done to the Mathers Foundation, I have come away with cymbidiums, for sort of 20, 25 pounds, which is a good price to pay for a cymbidium in blue. So we may come home with another cymbidium, but we won't be coming home with armfuls of the stuff. <laughs> Not from there. Um, but yes, um, Hannah and I will be off to that. And I want to try something new. Obviously I'll be filming. And what I'm going to ask Hannah to do is sort of follow me round with her phone. She takes very good close-ups of good clarity and quality and everything on her phone. And if I am filming, I can give her a nod and get her to take a real good close-up of that particular bloom. And then when I put the video together, I'll match the photos up with the video and perhaps do the close-ups as a... I won't call it a pop-up, I'll call it a pop-out, where you get, the, from the middle of the video, you get the photo opening up in the centre of the video, and then it can close down again, and the video can be paused while that's happening. So I might, you know, try and do something a bit more special than just the sort of thing I often do at a show. And a lot of people have said they're not too keen on looking at the orchids with music, even though that's the easiest thing to do. I'm not narrating while I'm filming out on site, that's not happening, but I can add a narration when I put the video together. Don't expect names of plants because it's too difficult to get them, um, especially in a nursery where you've got hundreds of plants all squashed together and some spikes sticking out. You, half the time you can't even see which pot the spike comes from. But um, I can still have a chat as I'm walking round, yeah? And add that afterwards, not at the time. So that video might be a little bit different. <clears throat> Especially as it's the last, it's not a show as such, but it'll be the last visit, visit for a while, for any, you know, where I'll be filming in that sort of vein. The only other thing that's liable to come up is a visit to Burnham's at some point, And I'll be looking out for some sort of event at Burnham's, like um, Devon Orchid Society perhaps having a show there, um, 
or I think Burnham's have got some sort of anniversary this year. Now last time they did a big anniversary, I think it was their 70th, they did a private um, function. Um, you had to be invited, which I did get invited to. <laughs> and there were drinks and food and all stuff like that. And when you've driven 105 miles, <laughs> drinks are not a lot of good, are they? <laughs> uh, I tell you what, if they do a similar thing again, I might actually take the plunge and stop overnight and get up early and come back the next day. I don't like leaving Mojo for that sort of length of time. You have to bear in mind, in my mind's eye, <clears throat> Mojo is coming up to 20 years old. How much longer is he going to be around? So I like spending as much time as possible with him. You know, that's how it is. So, uh, yeah. So have a think about um, what sort of cymbidium you think I ought to keep my eye out for. There might not be any there it's suitable. But the thing is with the cymbidiums, um, when you get into the cymbidium house, only half of it is Mathers. The other half is another company that sells cymbidiums online. I can't even remember the name of it. But they're happy when Mathers open for a tour for people to buy their orchids via Mathers and they pass the, pass the money on to them uh, if they make a sale. And most of theirs are 20 quid. So it's a matter of what's out in bloom that I fancy. We shall see. Um, yeah, so that's about it. This is still what I call a quiet time. Um, it is that time of year, but there, is, there are quite a few things coming into growth, not as a result of the lights, that would have done anyway. I know the plants well enough to know that they put on their growth this time of year, or they start coming into bloom. So that's um, not as a result of the lights. But looking down here, the last time we did everything in bloom on the 8th, another regular video, regular feature, we had no restrepias in bloom. Typical, they bloom almost constantly if they're happy. Um, and there weren't any, not a bloom in sight. There were a few buds and some that had gone over. Well, we've got a couple now. <coughs> These are difficult to hold still enough um, to actually get really sharp in focus. But um, this one is Haulise. So this originated from the Eric Young Foundation on the island of Jersey in the English Channel. Um, and these, as Restrepia blooms go, these are large blooms. Top to bottom is nearly as long as my finger, so these are on the large side, side, size, side of size. One of those words. That's before I finish my glass as well. Um, but yeah, two nice blooms have opened up on there. Um, lovely colours, lovely patterning. And I've still got to do, see if I can get the lights to show. Well, now I've got some blooms, we might try that. Do you know, I can see where they are. Whether I can get them to light up or not, like um, Helen Milner did, to demonstrate. And then I've got one other one that's in bloom. I think Ince has been playing with this one recently. I think he stuck it on a mount. Um, this is Capria. But it isn't. It probably is, but we have to say that it isn't. It's classed as a, a Cupria hybrid on the grounds that the seed pod formed on Restrepia Cupria and in the vicinity were other Restrepia Cuprias in bloom, but there were also other Restrepias in bloom not too far away. So there was no guarantee where the pollen came from that actually pollinated and generated the seed pod so it has to be called a hybrid um, lovely deep purple color on this one but as you can see that's a more normal size restrepia not even half the size of my finger that just goes to show how big the other ones were but beautiful color on that depth of color absolutely gorgeous so that's it
<coughs> I've still got two Restrepias that have never bloomed for me. They're the two that came from Hannah that are now plenty big enough to bloom and I'm expecting those to bloom in the not too distant future. So um, one of them I know exactly what it's going to look like because it's just a named variety of one I've already got. Um, but it should be a bigger, brighter bloom as it's a, you know, as a registered named variety. So awarded probably. Uh, right, um, that'll do for the day. <coughs> it's later in the day. I've still got to process this. It'll be dark before I get it loaded. At least now with my super fast um, fibre optic broadband, um, I've got an upload speed that I've never heard of. I mean, that's why I jumped at it when they, when they showed me that. I said, are you serious? Because normally you'll get a download speed. I mean, download speed for me is 920. Well, I was on 350 before, so that's quite an improvement. You know, that's a good improvement. But then when they said, oh, and you get a you get an upload speed of 920 as well. I said, are you serious? Because while I was on 350 download speed, my upload speed was 25, and that's normal. So when they said you've got an upload speed of 920 as well as a download speed, I thought, we're having some of that. So my longer videos like this one, well, and some others, um, repotting ones often go on a bit. <laughs> What do you mean you noticed? Cheek. Um, yes, the longer videos on Sunday, my Sunday chat used to take sometimes an hour and a half to load onto YouTube. And you have to bear in mind the Sunday chat video gets loaded twice. It gets loaded as an ad-free version for my patron site, Patreon site for the patrons. And then it gets loaded again for the normal YouTube um, viewers. So I load it twice. And, you know, that was taking three, three and a half hours to get those two videos loaded. A 50 minute video now takes about five minutes to load. It's whoosh, and it's done. I haven't finished typing the description in a lot of the time and it's loaded, it's waiting for me. It's already done. So that was well worth it, well worth it. And once I stop paying for the other one alongside it, it'll be really, really well worth it. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah, bad decision on my part, but uh, we've done all that. We've forgotten about it. I still have to pay for it, but we've forgotten about it. Um, yes, so that was a major improvement for me as a creator to have an upload speed to get my videos up onto YouTube really fast. And it saves the, ha <coughs> saves the hanging around. I'm mean, used to go out and go and do things and just leave it running because it took so long. But, um, yeah. So watch out for some um, in between the rain showers probably. There will definitely be some gardening and bonsai videos coming up on that channel. There have been a few more recently. Um, so if you haven't been over to that channel and you're interested, they're over there waiting to see and there will be more added during this week alongside the orchid videos. As yet undetermined, but there'll definitely be at least one repotting video. Um, and hopefully I'll be doing the first one of the five spotlights. So that's five orchids spotlighted in a single video. I'm allocating about five minutes each. So those should be 30 minute-ish videos, which is not too long for people's powers of concentration. Um, obviously there's a lot of talk in them, but they're visual as well because we will be looking at the actual orchids. I'm only doing spotlights on orchids I've got. You can't spotlight something you haven't got very well, have you? Um, so, uh, that, yeah, that'll be coming up as well. And, um, again, thanks for supporting this channel. Um, I could say it's what gets me out of bed in the morning, but that's called mojo. <laughs> uh, and the fact that I've had enough sleep, otherwise I'd go back to sleep, wouldn't I? No. But they say as you get older you don't need anywhere near as much sleep, and um, it's certainly in my case it's true. Um, so uh, I've had all I need, so there's no point in staying in bed, staring at the ceiling in the dark. So I see no point in doing that, so I get up. It makes myself useful. 
get on with my comments. And that's something else I ought to say as well, in case it's not obvious. On the Orchid channel, I post my videos normally after lunch towards early evening, so in that sort of five or six hours. That's when I normally post. I'll occasionally post one in the morning, but not often. Um, that would normally be because it's a short one, yeah? And so I've filmed it and processed it relatively quickly. But under normal circumstances, I post after lunch and before tea time, so in that gap there. And I get up the next morning at silly o'clock, as already discussed, get myself a coffee, sorry, feed cat, get myself a coffee, because if you do it the other way round, you end up walking on the cat, because it'll be under your feet. Um, yes, so do cat, do coffee, fire up the laptop and go through my comments and put my replies on. Yeah, So that's the time of day when the comments start appearing. Somewhere between 4 and 6 o'clock in the morning UK time. So if you put a comment on a video UK time 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you won't get a reply till that, till the early hours of the following morning, UK time. Yeah, that's how I work. Um, the Bonsai and the Gardening Channel, sometimes I will have two goes at that and do some replies in the afternoon. But most of the time I leave that till the morning as well. So that's when the replies pop up. So if, if your comment was an actual question that you're waiting to hear from me, yeah? Well, that's the time you're going to get your answer. Yeah, UK times, all of that, obviously. You'll have to translate that to Aussie time and <laughs> the Far East and Africa <laughs> and America. That side and that side, totally different. We well, shouldn't be so big, should you? <laughs> Do you know, I heard that there's a, I won't say how many, but there is a sizable percentage of Americans that have never left America. Now that might sound daft to somebody who comes from a tiny little itty bitty country like the UK, um, but just think of what America consists of. Mountains, forests, deserts, valleys, coastlines, I lived in somewhere like that perhaps I wouldn't have left it either <laughs> but you won't get the cultures that's what a lot of people go on holiday for is to experience different cultures different ways of living and the food <laughs> yes it, it, it doesn't matter you know you can you know you can cook a paella at home if you want it won't be the same as one in Spain or is it Spain or is it Italy Spain um, won't be the same, you know, it's not as the traditional cooking. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my mindset is such that there are a large quantity of countries that I would never visit on the grounds that I'm not interested in that culture. I, in some cases, I find it offensive. And in addition to that, they're not safe as far as I'm concerned. Not when there's plenty of places that are safe and welcome you as friends, you know, so... So, I can't go abroad at the moment anyway. I've got a cat. <laughs> anyway, um, if you're due to go on a holiday, because this is it, this is the time when lots of, well, Northern Hemisphere, this is when a lot of people are thinking about a holiday, you know, just stop and think where you're going. And lots of, video, lots of creators end their video with, and be safe. Well, choose your holiday destination wisely and be safe. Yeah? Don't choose somewhere that's volatile, that can flare up at a moment's notice, that's still got bandits in them their hills. <laughs> it's still about. <laughs> anyway, as I say, I don't go abroad anymore. I don't even have holidays at the moment because I'm sort of grounded. Too much to keep me here at the moment, and the majority of the time I'm happy here with my orchids, my cat, my newly acquired garden, which was hard work last year but isn't now. Bit of tweaking here and there, 
more planting to do and lots more sitting in the sunshine enjoying it this year. Lots more of that. Good. <laughs> anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to The Waffle. And um, I will see you next time. Videos coming up in the week and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, I'll end like others often do. Look after yourselves, enjoy your orchids, and be safe. Don't let that slip. Wherever you are, wherever you walk, wherever you travel, be safe. There's lots of places that you might think are safe or not. You can go to a rock concert and not come out. <laughs> There'd be an awful lot of the world will have no sympathy for that, I'm afraid, for obvious reasons. Just remember when there's conflict. The conflict is not normally caused by the ordinary people, but those are the ones that pay the consequences. So don't get that wrong. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.